Volpe has long been uh, recognized as a renowned center of excellence, right, for logistics and transportation. I've known this since my very junior days in the United States Army and all the way up, and I've been to visit uh, a few times now. And so I'm very, very grateful for the talent and the level of expertise and the relationship uh, that you have with the Department of Defense, but broader for the public of good for what you do uh, for safety and efficiency across all modes of transportation, and well beyond that in the work that you're doing. So I appreciate the opportunity to be here. There has been a long, proud history between the Department of Defense and domestic transportation, really precursors to the department itself and precursors to the Department of Transportation. But nonetheless, uh, the relationship has been long and steady. Much of our mobility infrastructure today has been uh, shaped by the need uh, for, for national security and to move our forces, right, from either camps and posts to seaports or airports or so forth and so on. And then I go to the bottom of the slide and I say, uh, today, uh, we're, we're a global force, and, but we still project the force from the continental United States. And so there are still domestic ties to the Department of Transportation in every single sector. And so you can see uh, those icons, uh, the railways for national defense, the strategic ports for national defense, the highway for national defense, and a series of other programs where we interface on a regular basis uh, to ensure that our, the Department of Defense and our joint force has the ability to project from the continent of the United States, of which where 85% of the joint force resides somewhere in the continent of the United States, we must be able to project it uh, ashore uh, globally. It just gives you an idea for the organization. There's an air component, there's a maritime component, there's an army component, uh, there's an enabling command that's unrelated to transportation. Won't spend much time on that today. And then there's an inextricably linked to commercial industry. So the equities that you have on the future of industry are the same equities I have to make sure that we have a viable, vibrant industry in the aviation world, in the sea lift world, uh, railways, et cetera. And so we, uh, we intersect at that, at that path. Uh, we have uh, 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 you know, high levels of dependency in some areas on commercial industry and lesser in, in other areas, as you might imagine. Um, I don't necessarily think of it as an organization. I think about the effects that we must achieve for the national leadership and the Secretary of Defense uh, and how we go about that. These are the mobility platforms. These are the conveyances that we use to move the force, whether that's cargo or, or uh, troops. Uh, you know, up, up, up top, you see the, you know, the air, you see the land, and you see the sea. Uh, whether that's oversized, outsized cargo moving on gray tails or whether that's cargo moving in, uh, on freighters, on commercial freighters or whether that's passengers moving on civil aviation uh, a fleet that we use, or whether that's aerial refuel that extends our reach so that we can extend, uh, we can launch a C-17 from the continental United States with a critical care team, go all the way into Bagram, extract a wounded warrior, come all the way back and bring him to Brook Army Medical Center in Texas without ever setting foot down because we can refuel twice en route and make sure that that individual gets the critical care that he needs to for a full recovery. Uh, that's the kind of reach, that's the kind of capacity uh, that the Joint Force has, and that's the kind of will that our nation has to take care of our great men and women in, uh, in uniform. Those conveyances aren't uh, much good unless we have nodes and routes to connect them to. And so the real power of a global enterprise like Transcom is this global posture, right, of nodes and routes that span uh, across the globe. And it gives us the flexibility to move uh, to the east if the issue's in the east, to the west if the issue's in the west, to the south, et cetera. So this, this network of both uh, military and route capabilities, as well as commercial uh, trade routes, gives us tremendous flexibility to move uh, to where the priority issue is, or to be able to take uh, from day-to-day -day operations, which are quite high tempo, to very, very high tempo, which we surge the, the entire enterprise, and uh, that allows us to move uh, something the size of Cincinnati, all the people and the vehicles of, the, of a city the biggest uh, Cincinnati. The security environment that you see today and you all read about is changing quite rapidly with great power competition. And so as we think about this as a strategic comparative advantage, and that's exactly how we think about it inside the department, we also recognize that the security environment's changing quite rapidly and that we must be able to conduct these operations, right, under persistent all-domain 
uh, attack. That's a, that's a changer for us as we move into the future. And then, as I indicated earlier, we're inextricably linked to some of the same equities that you have and the viability of a commercial industry that we can rely on for national security needs um, in the future.